Well, I actually run a biohacking group in Singapore. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about democratizing biology and how we can make it more accessible to the public. Okay, okay so I like to um, use a software as analogy and hardware. You know, when we when we think about hardware, uh, we can always experiment, we can look at instructables or GitHub, we can find things online. But for biology, it's a little, a little bit more difficult. So maybe because your equipment, your chemicals, patients are all really expensive and it's not accessible. So if I say I want to buy some, um, for example, gold remains or something, I can't buy it online. I can buy it to me fully. And also, um, all your protocols, methodologies are proprietary. It's not so easy to find. Let's say you go online and you try to find a research paper that you're interested in, and you find out to actually buy a paper. And even after you buy it, you don't list the methodology. You just give a brief description of how the experiment is run. So you can't really do anything with it. So, I'm uh, okay, so why do we want um, to make it more accessible? Well, one is outreach, so we can inspire future generations to become scientists, etc. Uh, with more people, there are more advancements in different science. So, one thing I like to think about is Folded, which is the game that we just uh, put in Folded. So, actually, scientists have been working for years trying to model this one thing working, and nothing worked. So, they developed it into a game, and then millions of people tried out. And within two weeks, they got the answer. So with more people, it's a lot uh, faster. Also, we can do a lot more fun experiments as a community lab, because um, proprietary labs might not get funding to do certain experiments. And obviously, it's fun. So one thing that really might do me um, sometime back is this thing called CRISPR. So CRISPR is a genetic engineering tool. And basically, we are trying to move forward from you know having constant time in the lab to go on the laptop. So basically anyone can be good genetic engineering at home. So here are certain tools that I that I found. So basically let's say I have a genetic defect and I want to cure. How do I go about doing that? If I want to let's say design a genetic cure. So using something that I call CRISPR. Basically CRISPR is something like a programmable uh, genetic edit editing tool. So let's say I want to cut my DNA in a certain place, right? In order to cure my disease. What I would do is, I would go to XCBI and have a free database where they can go through the entire database, find sequences for any genetic disease, any genes that you want, and you can basically take that. You can find uh, sequences in this bacteria by MIT. They basically uh, list, uh, basically, you can input any gene here, and that basically tells you how you can synthesize a particular genetic tool that will work with CRISPR in order to your DNA. You can use uh, tools like Tenfold in order to basically view and see how everything will work together, your whole DNA sequence, and you can just send for synthesis. So basically, you can become, uh, you can basically edit genes in your house. You know, you don't need a fancy lab or anything. You can start doing genetic engineering at home. So actually, for this talk, I won't be going too much in depth. So you might have to explore this out uh, by yourself, or you can just start looking after the talk since it's just a taser. So, for basic genetic engineering, the equipment that you need is generally very simple. simple. So, basically, it is all the very simple processes, keeping, pulling, mixing, things that we can actually we can automate, things that we can build really quickly and easily at home. So, some of the things that um, we as a NEPA do, we have to uh, do um, what, what we call uh, ghetto engineering. So it involves a lot of duct tape, Arduinos, stuff like that. So yeah, um, it might look, it might not look pretty, but it does the job. So basically, uh, over here we have something uh, incubator that we use to grow mammalian cells that we use to culture. Uh, we also have things like PCR. So PCR basically a machine to duplicate your DNA. So basically, it sounds very fancy, but it's basically cycles the temperature in that rapid succession, high and low. So something that you can really easily do with Gaussian modules, arduinos, things like that. But, so people still may find it difficult because one is, you know, regions are still expensive, you know, we may not live in your community lab that other people are like, and also biosafety is another major concern. So when you're presenting, like, for example, virus or something like that, that's something you don't really want to have in your house for obvious reasons. 
So this is actually one of the projects that we are working on right now. So this is the cloud box. It's basically a completely sealed environment that you can control and basically it has a sort of robotic arm inside. And we are planning to attach it, uh, basically make it your web server. So wherever you are anywhere in the world, you can control this robotic arm and do your experiments inside. Simply send us an email and we will go and get the reagent for you. And basically you just pay for the reagent, so that's pretty much free. And basically it will allow you to do experiments wherever you want, anywhere in the world. And this will probably be up in about a month or so. So do contact me at my email. Um, check it out. Um, we have a website coming up soon, so you can check it out if you're interested. And do chat with me later if you're interested or anything. Yeah, thanks. Any questions? Why did you get started with this? Like you were saying. Um, it's fun. It's just, um, I was not thinking that genetic engineering is something that, you know, exists in sci-fi models and high expensive labs. You know, when you, when you see genetic engineering on TV, you normally see an uh, underground lab with some mad scientists with a cat, cat dog hybrid or something. So it doesn't seem really accessible or something that you can do at home. And I first started off in software and hardware. I thought it would be amazing that I could just go online, you know, put Stack Overflow or something, and I can find uh, answers for pretty much anything. I can just go to Simpson Square and buy any components I want. And I wanted to see if I could get that with the biology I found. And what is the first project that you would suggest for someone who's getting started with? I really have no idea because I think it really just is depends on you, where your background is from. So if you're starting off with maybe software background or hardware background, you can try maybe doing a bit of DIY equipment. Um, right now they have a few kits online, just for genetic engineering kits that you can order. Uh, very simple try ones, but it's quite good to get you interested in it. What projects do you have in the Okay, so we have a number of projects at the moment. Um, one of them was a prosthetic arm, which I actually showed at last year's Force Asia conference. So we're actually working with uh, disabled people with amputations and all, trying to get it to work. And it's really low cost, so pretty much anyone can afford it. Some of the more flashy projects that we're that's going on is we're trying to grow a human heart. So at the moment, we've actually um, We've started growing fish heart cells, and we've actually got it to beat. But we are still working on. <laughs> we are still uh, gonna work on human eventually once we get the club box working and everything, because of yeah biosafety concerns. Okay. Can we come and visit? Yeah, sure. <laughs> At the moment, if anyone is uh, rich and wants to sponsor me, we need a uh, we need a space. Uh, I heard there's a lot of investors here at Force Asia, so please look for me. <laughs> so put things in context there and you're like what, 15? Uh, no, I'm 17 at the moment, so yeah. <laughs> close enough. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm amb ambitious to the point of delusion, so why not? Okay, so if there's no more questions, yeah, thanks. <laughs>